Tonight, a near miss on the outskirts of Port Augusta. Dramatic vision as a driver is forced off the road by a truck. And roll up, roll up, the circuits rolls in to Port Lincoln. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening, but first tonight, changes to community legal services in South Australia could see a number of services outsourced, including in our region. The state government says the federal funding cuts have forced the moves, but the opposition says regional areas will be left underrepresented. Community legal centres are vital points of contact for people in need of legal assistance. The federal government was set to cut $50 million in funding before a backflip this year. Despite this, the state government is making changes to overcome a gap in funding. We have been basically in constant contact with the community legal centres here in South Australia with a view to... Um, working out how we would deal with this cut. Legal Aid will be the first point of contact with the group getting $300,000 in funding. General services will be provided by a number of firms in different regions, with Westside Lawyers awarded the contract for the Mid-North and Outback. The state opposition, however, smells a rat and says the state government is the guilty party, to the tune of $6 million. And then did a backflip uh, a month or so ago and put $55 million back in. Uh, the fact is, in the end, there's still a shortfall. Also changing is the provider for legal information for those seeking advice on Social Security, with uniting communities replacing the Welfare Rights and Advocacy Service. But despite concerns about the complex nature of that strand of law, Mr Rouse says he's confident of high-quality advice. I'm very confident uniting communities will have the skills uh, and will... Uh, do a good job. Ms Chapman says legal offices will close in the South East and Riverland and she's concerned the Air Peninsula is next. Uh, then it will obviously adversely affect uh, Port Lincoln, Wyala, Port Augusta, Port Perry. But Mr Rouse says the Liberals should be directing their complaints towards their federal counterparts. I think the, the state opposition is just terribly embarrassed by what their federal colleagues have done. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Port Perry Council has opposed the plan to build a wind farm in the southern Flinders Ranges. It comes following concerns the towers could have a negative impact on the scenic view of the landscape. Neon Energy wanted to build a wind farm at Crystal Brook, which would have included a solar farm and a battery bank to store power. But Port Perry Council has rejected the proposal. That uh, was a result for carrying on from the presentation that the proponents gave to Council in May. Council raising a number of concerns regarding the flow-on effect the wind towers may have on the area. The main concern is, aside from the fact that um, the zone was specifically created to protect, and um, by all its descriptions, protect against this type of development, there is a concern that to ignore the provisions of of that protective zoning creates a precedent that could be argued could potentially open up the rest of the Flinders Ranges for similar type development. The towers would have sat in the Port Perry Regional Council's Ranges Zone which influenced the decision to not go ahead with the build. The intent of Council is to preserve the Flinders Ranges Vista as it, as it stands at the moment and actually try and enhance um, it, the um, value and amenity of it. An old council development plan states that this popular destination is a protected area and that nothing should be developed on this location that will negatively impact the scenic landscape. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Dashcam footage has emerged of a terrifying near miss between a truck and a car outside of Port Augusta. The nail-biting vision has been shared on Facebook and shows a truck overtaking another truck, forcing the oncoming driver off the road, missing them by just metres. The video has been viewed over 30,000 times since it was uploaded this morning and shows the truck was from Garden Grove Haulage in Adelaide. The company released a statement today saying they apologise to the community and are conducting a full investigation of the incident, it's understood the driver has been stood down. 
Port Augusta Council is calling on residents to put forward their feedback on the newly released draft budget. After months of discussions on reducing its operating deficit, the council is set to begin the public consultation process and is proposing a rate rise of 3%. After months of budget meetings and discussions, the Port Augusta City Council has released this year's draft budget. It includes a proposed 3% rise in rates. No one likes rate rises. I don't like rate rises, so I, I can appreciate that uh, people don't like that. Our rate rise is 3%, which is CPI plus 1% in, in this current year, and, and it's actually our lowest rate rise, so the Council's lowest rate rise in well over 15 years, in fact close to 20 years. The Council says it will focus on sticking to their asset management plan with almost $3 million allocated in the budget for repairs around town. That's what we've done. We've fully funded it. It's well over $2 million worth of funding, which means over a period of time and sticking to that budgeted discipline on a number of areas, but particularly in this area, means that in that three, four, five year window, things will actually really start to, to visually improve. With an operating deficit of $4.5 million, the Council plans to tackle savings for the 18-19 budget straight after this year's is adopted. Yet with this year's budget still in its draft stages, Mayor Johnson says Council wants the community's feedback at upcoming public meetings and online. So please have a look at it and if you've got areas of concern where you think something doesn't quite add up, ask the question because you'll get a factual answer and if you need supporting information, we'll, we'll give you that. A community forum is set to be held on Tuesday next week. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. The New South Wales government is looking into the possibility of gas exploration with the Far West region earmarked for a pilot program. The state's resources minister Don Harwin says the Bancanya Trough north of Broken Hill and the Pundi Range Trough north of Vulcania were both areas of interest. The areas cover more than 12,000 square kilometres. The local MP Kevin Humphreys says the regions are a sensible choice as they're away from residential and agricultural regions and they've been able to accommodate, they'd be able to accommodate conventional gas drilling as opposed to the more controversial fracking. The Greens though say the plan is disgusting while the Conservation Council has also raised concerns saying the focus should be on clean energy. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, some high-speed action as motorheads head north for the Blinman Motor Carter. The details ahead. Welcome back. Police are urging motorists to be careful on the state's roads this long weekend. The Drive Safe operation will run over the three days, aiming to achieve a fatality-free weekend. Eight people have been killed and 26 seriously injured in crashes during this time over the past four years. Police are asking motorists not to speed, drink or drug drive and not to get easily distracted by their mobile phones. Two Wyala school students will be among five kids from South Australia to attend a renowned science event in Sydney. Sam Custance and Rennie Birch will attend the International Science School with both looking forward to two weeks of nothing but science. These two students from Air High are busy preparing for mid-year exams, but they're already thinking past them. Sam and Rennie are heading to Sydney, where they'll spend a fortnight learning more about a career in science. I'm very excited to learn about what is coming in the future and how, what the plans are for future energy. I've just always been interested in science as a kid. I was always interested in knowing how things work. Founded in 1987, the International Science School brings high school students to Sydney for two weeks in July. Students undertake various lectures and activities with the aim of getting them interested in a science career. Teacher Caitlin White, herself a former attendee, says the two will have the time of their lives. And I have four or five kids that it would benefit them or they'd get a lot out of it. I approached them and asked them or told them that they should apply. With just five places available for South Australian students, having two from one school attend is being hailed as a remarkable achievement. Sam and Rennie say they both understand the significance of their achievement. Definitely going to take a lot of notes there as this is something I could bring back and use on my research project or something. I'll prepare myself a bit more over the next few weeks before I get to go. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. A time capsule was buried today in Port Lincoln to mark the beginning of a new winery estate. Sentimental items from the Air Peninsula were buried along with regional postage stamps, fishing lures and maps of the area. Burying a slice of the Air Peninsula's history for future generations to uncover. 
Today, a time capsule was concealed at the renovation site of the Delicaline Winery to mark new beginnings for the estate while celebrating memories of the past. We thought it was really important to be able to capture so many things that are important to Air Peninsula. So we've put things about our seafood, our uh, agriculture, but also little quirky things. Those quirky items include a pencil, USB, a light globe, money, tools and postage stamps. Time capsules date back thousands of years and while it's unlikely this one will be preserved that long, the mystery of when it opens remains an exciting thought. It's a really strange concept thinking who will be opening the box in 100 years, let alone what they will be thinking of us. The concept originating with the winery's new function area, set to launch by the end of the year. They certainly will have the most spectacular views and uh, delicious food and wines when they come and enjoy their time here. And part of Port Lincoln's cherished past continues to be the inspiration for the new. Yeah, we found um, a quote from the Mayor of Port Lincoln in 1978 that said, history can never be recreated, it must be preserved. So this is our way of actually preserving a little bit of our slice of heaven, as we call it. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Well, for the second year in a row, the Blenman Motor Cana was held over the weekend north of Port Augusta. 50 avid motorbike riders competed in events which were originally designed for horses. Bending, riding and barrel racing are events you'd normally do on a horse, but last year organisers from the town of Blenman created an event for those who love their bikes. It's sort of a different thing. It's a lot quicker. Uh, it doesn't need as much runoff space as the horses do and you sort of get everything running a lot quicker than the horses. but The Blinman Motocana boasted three categories, the Peewee for younger riders, the seniors and the 80 to 110 cc for those in between. Uh, similar to the gym, gym car stuff, so we've got barrel races and bending and uh, novelty things like that. A little one we call a steak race, is sort of a figure of eight around a couple of pegs and um, yeah, things like that and a couple of flat track races that get the crowds into it. With the popularity of motorbikes in the area, the Motocana had 50 competitors and a crowd of 150 came to watch on the day. Everyone nowadays has motorbikes in their shed somewhere. They've, I wouldn't say, uh, taken over the horses, but sort of made it a life a little bit easier, I think. After its debut last year, John says he hopes the Blinman Motocana will keep going year after year. Yeah, so far it's been yeah, reasonably successful, I think, with um, good numbers showing up and, yeah, so... Hopefully we can keep going well into the future. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. When we return after the break, roll up, roll up. One of the country's biggest circuses rolls into Port Lincoln. We'll head along next. Welcome back. Well, as we head towards the long weekend, we're being urged to shop around for petrol if we're heading away, with forecasters suggesting prices could go either way. To this week's Fuel Watch now, and if we start on the unleaded figures, we can see there's been a drop of around two cents in Port Pirie this week around 125 and a half. Port Augusta steady, just under 126, while a three above that, and even. Port Lincoln has seen the smallest drop possible, so essentially no change, no difference for Broken Hill either. If you're Adelaide band, however, the price is down around 10 cents. To Diesel now, and Port Augusta has seen a drop of, of, a, about, of around a cent. Port Lincoln with a slight decrease, but still on 125. Adelaide has seen a rise, though, for diesel drivers up to 127. Now, as always, these prices are just the averages if they, don't, if they don't represent one particular outlet. So if you do spot a bargain, let us know on our Facebook page, especially if you're travelling around over the long weekend. Well, a Soccer Excellence Academy program introduced at John Perry Secondary School is allowing students to strive for greatness on the sports field through a subject they enjoy. Yesterday, the 19 students involved received their playing guernseys. The program was offered to Year 8 and 9 students this year with a grade point average of 3, giving students the ability to pick a subject they are interested in. Through both theory and practical elements, students gain a high understanding of the sporting industry. So all the theory components actually include refereeing, coaching, sports management. The program has proven to be a success with students achieving academic excellence. It's, it's going really, really well at the moment. A lot of students are getting a sense of belonging out of it that they want to achieve and they want to maybe pursue a pathway in sport. The practical element of the subject encourages students to have fun while learning. Just having a kick around with your friends, learning new things. 
The Academy encourages players to be the best they can be on and off the field. The sense of belonging for a lot of the students at the school and we drive excellence here and that's what we're striving for is by the Academy as well. The Guernsey presentation held at the school yesterday saw many excited faces as the players received their brand new uniform. It's always good for the students to be able to receive something brand new and it's, and it's theirs. They, they want something out of it, they, they enjoy it. And the players will wear their colours with pride during their game next week. It makes us uh, look more professional I guess and it makes us seem more smart and more like better as a school I guess to have like same playing strips. The academy will take the next step by offering the elective subject to more year levels and possibly work on a partnership with Adelaide United. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Australia's largest travelling circus with some of the country's most unique acts is making a pit stop in Port Lincoln. Hudson Circus, featuring trapeze artists and performers from Brazil, will entertain locals over the long weekend before making the trip to Perth. Roll up, roll up, the Hudson Circus is in Port Lincoln. You're going to see a world-class flying trapeze act, you're going to see um, the largest uh, performing animal acts, um, and you're going to see uh, contortionists and acrobats and, and uh, trapeze artists, it's fantastic. Hudson's is Australia's largest travelling circus, which includes a small city of people living and working on the road. Um, it's like travelling with a small town, so you've got all your friends, um, your family with you, uh, and, and we travel from town to town. The circus is also renowned for its dome of death motorbikes at full throttle just inches from colliding. But what really sets the show apart is its animals, featuring Australia's largest animal act. Not every day that kids get to see llamas or camels or water buffalo even. Um, so it's nice to be able to see the look on all their faces and, and how happy they are to see the animals. Living, travelling and caring for 17 animals is a full-time job, but it's something animal trainers Rob and Belinda enjoy every day. We're very lucky that we're able to uh, travel Australia to, uh, to work with animals every day, which Belinda and I love doing, and um, yeah, just to show them off to the people. Dundee here is a water buffalo from Southeast Asia, but he originally grew up in a farm right here in Port Lincoln. But when they have some time away, they're eager to explore the region. My partner and I have actually done the shark cage diving here in Port Lincoln, and uh, we're actually going to go out on Thursday and do the seal swim as well. The circus is in town from tonight until Saturday, before making their way to Western Australia. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. After the break, we'll have a look at how the local weather is panning out for the rest of the week. Turning our attention to the weather now, and there was more of that sunshine today. 18 the top in Port Augusta with 17 in Wyala and in Port Piri. Port Lincoln also 18 today and a sunny 14 in Broken Hill. On the national satellite image, the region remains fairly clear for now, despite some cloud bands moving up from the south. Out on the Gulf waters, the winds to 10 knots and variable. The seas to a metre and a half and southerly sunrise at 19 minutes past seven. So tomorrow is looking like much more of the same. 18 on the way for Port Augusta, then 17 in Wyala and for Port Perry. Showers for Port Lincoln, possibly a top of 19 degrees. Sunny and 15 in Broken Hill. And they're looking into Friday, a bit of cloud about for Port Lincoln with 18 degrees at the top, much the same into Saturday. Cleveland 17, then 18 in that cloud clearing. Woodner 19 degrees both days. While are not really seeing any change at all over the next few days, 17 for Friday and Saturday again. Port Augusta 17, then 18. Katina also continuing this trend of sitting on 17 degrees. Port Perry with a sunny 17 for both days. Clear with 14 on Friday, then 15 on Saturday. Broken Hill 14 and then 16 into the weekend. And that's the local news for this evening. Don't forget, as always, you can stay up to date with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Tomorrow night, due to Thursday night footy, we'll be over on 7 2 at 6 30, so do join us there. For now, though, I'm Tim Hatfield from the team here at Southern Cross News. Have a good evening. Good night.